Okay, so now that we've uh, determined that this refrigerator is probably going to be a keeper, since it seems to be keeping everything cold and doing the same thing that a big household refrigerator would do, um, the next question is, how do we power this when we're out and about and uh, park someplace for extended periods of time uh, with no plug-ins, uh, no other power available? Uh, what do we do? Well, the conventional wisdom would be, uh, Rich, get yourself a solar panel, uh, stick it on the roof, run the wires inside, and hook it up to a charge controller and then to your battery. And you'll have your power, you know, whenever you want it, need it, whatever. And uh, I agree. That's, that's one possibility. Then someone would say, ah, but you'd like to be parked in the shade and still benefit from solar power by extending the panels and putting them in the sunshine where they're going to be able to get charged up. Yeah, that would be a good idea. So, uh, that means no sticking it to the roof of the van. Uh, we're going to go with a portable set of solar panels. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of like that idea. I like shade. I like solar panels in the sun, me in the shade, and being able to use it that way. Yeah, that would be good. But as we know on this channel, if there's any way we can complicate things a little more, I'll probably find it. And so... <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to make things complicated. I'm just trying to optimize the solar panels so that they give me the widest range of flexibility possible. Well, I look through everything available, and there are solar suitcases available that I can put out in the sun, but I can't really attach them to the vehicle. There are solar panels I can attach to the vehicle, but they're kind of hard to take off and put out in the sun. So I'm saying to myself, what if I could have a hybrid solar panel that I could both attach to the vehicle when I wanted to use it on the vehicle, and then be able to remove it and move it someplace out in the sun or that kind of thing when I want to be parked in the shade. Wouldn't that be the best of both worlds? Maybe. So, that's what I'm going to try and do. And I have a little parts list. Uh, we're going to look down at the computer here. There we go. We're going to take a look at the parts involved in doing this. So, first of all, we have at $8.99 one pair of TY Branch MC4 connectors. That is going to be used to hook uh, two 50 watt solar panels together to create a 100 watt uh, folding suitcase like the ones we see online. Okay, next we need a solar charge controller. Now, I spoke with a friend of mine who is an electrician who also is off grid, has been for about 10 years. Uh, his whole house is solar powered. And he informed me that I could get an MPPT charge controller, but that I needed headroom. I don't know what that means, but he tells me that 
a PWM in the circumstances I'm using a charge controller is probably going to be uh, just as good as using an MPPT charge controller. Well, one is uh, $80 and the other is $20, uh, $18.99. So for $18.99, I'm going to take a chance and say, yeah, it'll probably work as good as I need it to work. Okay. So we've got that out of the way. Then we have uh, two flexible 50 watt mono solar panel, flexible solar panels uh, from a company called HQST, which I understand to be uh, very good as far as uh, if you have any problems, returns, that kind of thing. Uh, they're here where I live in California. <coughs> So I feel pretty confident in this company after reading many, many reviews. Now, I can get two 50-watt panels for about $4 less than what one 100-watt panel will cost me. Let's think about that for a second. If I have two 50-watt panels and one panel goes haywire, I still have another panel that I can use. If I have one 100 watt panel and a panel goes haywire, well, I don't have any panel I can use. So this involves a little redundancy that I always like. It also involves economy. It's less expensive for two than it would be for one. Okay. Then, moving down, five uh, pairs is what I got of 30 amp MC4 connectors. These are going to be used to connect all this stuff together with a bunch of wire. Now, my friend again tells me that I can buy wire locally and he has a source for it and it's at a price comparable to connectors and wires I buy online. So what that enables me to do is measure how much wire I'm going to need and buy just the amount of wire I need so I don't have any waste because this wire is not cheap. And I don't want to buy more than I need, but I want to have enough so that I have plenty for whatever I need. Make sense? I hope so. So, that is what I'm buying. And when it gets here, we're going to start seeing what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how I'm making use of this stuff. I'm also buying some other parts that are going to hopefully make this a very unique, interesting solar charging solution. And uh, that remains to be seen. I've done some good things, and then I've done some complete flop failure things. So hopefully this is the first, and you know, will be a, a good thing and not the second uh, flop. I don't see where it would be a flop, but I hope it turns out the way I envision it to turn out. So, that's it for now. When the parts come in, we'll start figuring out what we're going to do with them. Uh, that's it. Uh, it's not really helpful at this time because we don't know what we've got. We don't know if we've got a good thing. We don't know if we've got a thumbs up a thumbs down, some way or the other, don't know yet. So that's just uh, the first installment on what I'm planning to do for the new solar system and my thoughts on the subject. Uh, if you'd like to comment, please do. Uh, share the video if you think it would be helpful or somebody wants to follow along with the progress here, that would be great. And as always, comment as you see fit. Till the next video.
See you later.